Hello and welcome again to episode two of Brad vs. Art. Um, hopefully today I will do a much better job than last time because I have had a lot of criticism from my first episode, both harsh and harsh and constructive criticism. So I've taken it all to heart and thankfully, hopefully, I will fix all the problems such as length, uh, not putting up pictures without permission, and not forcing myself to sound angry when I'm not actually angry. So, without further, further ado, I will start off with fixing one of my own pictures. So, this is a picture I did back in 2010, back when I was still in my first year of animation, and this is called Woven Watching the Evening Sky. Uh, this is on my DeviantArt page, and uh, I'm still sort of proud of it. The icon, the head here, is still my uh, DeviantArt icon, which I probably could have changed. But, you know, I did this almost four years ago, and uh, you know what? I could probably make it better. They can probably make it a lot better. Maybe. <laughs> and anyway, let's see. So, I'll go with a couple quick things that I'm noticing right now. Um, I was definitely a little obsessed with uh, the design for his uh, feet, which are the same as his hands here. So, I put this big emphasis here on his foot, which, I don't know, it's really lumpy. I guess I tried to make like pads like a paw, but it just ends up kind of looking lumpy. And uh but really the best part is like from all the comments I've received from people is not even my little quote unquote fursona here of woven, but the design and graphic design I did for the background, like I, I just wanted something quick and cool, maybe Samurai Jack inspired, and I just got these just completely flat shapes, and they're, they all have variety to it, and they just slowly get more and more faded into the distance, and that's arguably the best part of this picture. So, if I was to completely redo this picture, I would redo a lot. I wouldn't just modify the pose and, you know just change the character designs I've made to Woven over the past four years. I, I do a lot. So here's how I'm going to speed up everything in this uh, channel here for Brad vs. Art. Pause button. Through the magic of editing, here's what I would fix. All right, I've been paused for about half an hour, and I drew... Oh, damn it, come on. And I drew this. So yes, this is how I would redo this scene here. So what I've done here is I've completely changed the camera angle, about 90 degrees, and uh, kind of taken the focus off of Woven here, but improved him in ways. So what I've done, just for the background, quickly, I've kept the uh, the simple shapes because uh, I like them. And they, again, they get more faded when they get into the background. And I uh, kept the unique weird shapes of all the buildings because it's supposed to be kind of a sci-fi, futuresque, dystopia. I don't know. It changes every other day the setting that Woven is in, but, uh, somehow that's got there, but most importantly, I brought foreground elements in these random scaffolding or bars or construction or whatnot here gives the picture a third dimension. The previous picture, well, you know, you had here, 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 but nothing, like, he was just, he was just in the front. 
Now, now he's kind of in the middle, just with the added inclusion of these bars here. And for woven now, uh, I'm going to change the green. That. So basically, before he kind of had a pretty much vertical line of action. He had he had the shoulders tilting. This was all pop. That had a bit of line of action. This had some. And, you know, he kind of had something going here. It, it was mostly because it was front on and I wanted to focus on his foot too much. And, and his face. So what I got now is a clear line of action. Zoom in a little here. A clear line of action going through his body here and through his body down through his tail here. And then again, I got the shoulders, all his weights on this arm right here. You know, his legs up, more or less the same pose. His hand right here, holding on to his leg. And then, then is out through his toes. And then, because I've designed him now to have a little bit more of a snout, he kind of, like all those Pixar tricks you probably see pictures of, now we got kind of an arrow, a better eye direction, pointing out to the neat little minimalistic vista I have designed. So, all in all, I'm quite happy with this. I might even finish painting this, make it look super awesome. Because I like it. And do you know what? I could even, like, make Woven less of a deal here. Just kind of make them just in the background. in the background and then I just kinda damn it I'm supposed to be speeding up come on kinda give them this black rough outline here totally silhouetted and then give him a nice rim light you know it's like this is all you see clearly longer longer work on it but I'm happy with the changes Makes it more of a nice little scene from a graphic novel rather than a look, his feet are weird. <laughs> anyway, the next biggest part of the problem was the fact that I took people's pictures without permission. The whole randomly choosing the third picture on DeviantArt doesn't quite work. I figured I was a little... I don't know, I was impatient so I posted it without checking, but I really didn't think people would be too angry, but thankfully the artists that have replied to me, uh, that I critiqued, uh, they didn't seem to mind, they're just, you know, in the future, give credit. And I did give credit, but I meant to say permission. Give permission. So I started up a little forum and I got two people saying, pick a picture from my gallery, I love critiques, so... So what I'm going to do, rather than random, without permission. <laughs> Alright, uh, this is In the Water by This Is No Name. And uh, this person definitely said that I could go through their gallery and give them some critiques. And... Uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say what uh, a lot of professionals say when they see uh, artwork that is developing like this is uh, it needs it needs to go back to the basics. It lacks the fundamentals and principles. It's a polite way of saying that it's pretty far out of the league of what you'd be if you went to college. But do you know what? I don't know where you are at. You could be just starting. But truth be told, I couldn't actually decide when I went through your gallery if uh, you were intentionally drawn like this or not because you actually have uh, a bit of a style going on. Not really my thing, but you definitely exaggerate proportions and things. And, you know, if you keep working on that, you can definitely get a really cool style that looks appealing. Although, to like untrained people, it might look like you're doing a shitty job, but in fact, you're actually doing a genius job. So, I can't quite give you the best help on working on your uh, graphic art style, but I'll definitely see what I can do with uh, some anatomy and some pose suggestions on this lady or dude. I don't know, the lack of boobs, but the plus of eyelashes is throwing me off. I'll just say it's a woman. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see what I come up with. All right, so I'm back to your picture here. This is no name, and uh, I accidentally drew on your lair, but uh, ignore that. So basically, I tried to keep your style intact, but I gave you some more anatomy here. And let me just point out some things. Boom. So I'll zoom in. So first of all, I noticed you had her hands on her hips, so I tried to kind of keep that there for you. And that pose generally has a uh, kind of like one of these heads up, but the hip is rocking. So I did that with your hip. As you can see, I got this curve here. And then have one shoulder up because it's holding itself up on the hip. And since the other one isn't, it's sagging a little lower down here. Actually, I probably could have. Stuck her arm out a little further. But it depends on who you are. Some people like to have their hand on their thigh. Some have it on their waist, on their hip. So, room for interpretation. But, made the butt stick out a little more. This here, this here. And because, uh... I threw in a curve into her body. There was a slight twist. And, well, where you placed the belly button and the nipples was uh, not very right uh, for the pose, I, especially for the pose I did. They should be... Okay. For the pose I did, they should be here because they're going along the body. And because the body is twisting now, the belly button is lower like that. And then for your head, continue to work on your style or take heed. Oops. But uh, yeah, that again, that's the front on eye. The skull's not quite there, and the cheekbone is way over here. Person has a very smashed up face. So, what I did was, yeah, you use some colors that really conflict with my choice of colors, so sorry about that. Basically... Gave you that three-quarter eye. Kept it nice and big. And then this guy here. Zoom a little further. 
this guy here, three quarter eye, kept your cute tiny nose, keep it nice and rounded, and your lips, you don't need to fill them in all the way because you're coloring them. So you just do a couple little lines here to show the lips. And then your hair was pretty flat, so I added a couple little swooshes here. Kept your neck thick for the head shape you had going. But yeah, basically you just got to stop going and thinking everything is objective, like eye, eye, nose, mouth, okay, arm, arm. Basically, you draw a shape, figure out the perspective of the shape, and then imagine it's flat on. So you kind of like that puzzle that you might have done like in preschool. So like, there's one nipple, there's one nipple. So you go, uh, nipple, nipple. Okay, belly button's here. And you're like, oh, I didn't draw it, but uh, belly button's there. So you just kind of have to wrap your stuff around your more organic shapes. And real quickly, because that took longer than I thought. I did a quick look at your background and again no real trees exist in nature that are pretty like straight up so you have to add a bit of randomness and organicness to it and I don't mean like go and make them do like loop-de-loops and stuff <laughs> But, you know, you notice the winds might have changed, a tree branch might have broken, another tree might have been fighting for the light. So the tree will grow in unique ways. And, well, once you figure out the branches, I'm just going super rough with these branches, then you kind of think of little patches of leaves so you don't have the cartoony whoosh 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 unless of course you develop a really cool style and painting technique because there's a plethora of examples of simplistic art styles like this looking beautiful so take what i said with a grain of salt and just uh work on uh wrapping around your shapes building your characters out like a robot so you can pose them cooler it's called construction and uh, add some more variety into your background all right i'll do the next one super super quick because i wanted to be 15 it's probably gonna be 25 but here we go all right for the third and final picture of brad versus art episode two hopefully improved over the first one <laughs> is gorilla weasel by florian k now last episode i emphasized it maybe not enough and i know i haven't done it enough this time i've only been a professional animator since 2012 and character design wasn't my strongest suit it was animation but all the art skills you learn throughout school they're all transferable to different departments and different techniques so that's why i feel i'm somewhat capable of looking at art and giving critiques but I know there are thousands of artists better than me, and I found one! Florian K., your shit is awesome. I had to go to your second last picture to find something that I, I just didn't fall in love with it, for the amount of skill. And this one, I, I just I really like what you got going here. I, I did a, uh, a sequence for the, uh, the new 2014 Tom and Jerry show with a weasel. Uh, spoilers, there is a weevil, a weasel in Tom and Jerry. And I kind of fell in love with uh, how weasels move because the director asked me, make it move like a snake, like head first. And it was just, it was really fun. So I got weasels on the brain still. It's been months. So I saw this and went, okay, <laughs> this is it. 
So here are my suggestions. All right, I'm back with Gorilla Weasel by Florian K. Very awesome artist. Got a lot of what I am talking about already in their art. So can't say much, but my biggest problem with this one, I'd have to say, is there was kind of a problem with negative space and balance in this. You do have this really wicked cool line of action. This is one reason why I fell in love with the weasel I was animating is because it's like a snake. He just kind of keeps going. But if you kind of put down where his most center of gravity is, you basically have this tail that's not very heavy, but everything else which is. So not so much, but... He is a little, looks like he should be going this way, but his legs aren't quite grounded. It kind of looks like he should be falling down this way. I don't know. Something's wrong. It just seems a little off balance, and we could do with a little bit more negative space here. The fact that you have some is good, and you are you force some of it, that's very good. But here is what I was thinking, a little bit more of an elongated long line of action, because I was thinking something more like this. So you kind of have a bit of a broken neck, not saying so much with a weasel, but I think if we, if he was more of on his side and looking more at you like a front front three-quarter that way we could kind of stick his butt out more and then his tail could either do the kind of the whoosh you're going with or just a just a full-on arc like this but that would cover up some of the details but I think that helps the balance now butts here I got the legs right here arms arms there's a lot more balance right here weight grounded tail or tail a lot more balanced and I think you got a little bit more negative space between your details here it's hard to hear see let me just put yours a little more transparent here so yeah I think rather than a the bent leg you got, I think one of those, like an almost completely outstretched leg, put it profile. That way you can show off the toes, I guess. Another angle from your, your cool little weasel boots. Eh, too many undos. You can force the perspective of the, the tip of the tail a little more. But mostly a little more balance with the legs here and the body up there and the face a little more front on. I don't know. What you got is 99% awesome. This is my two cents. So take it or leave it. Anyway, that has been Brad vs. Art, episode two. Oops, sorry, microphone. <laughs> Hopefully the process has been streamlined, you enjoyed it, and I'm not robbing anyone's stuff. Technically not robbing, critiquing anything without people's permission. If you have a picture you want to show me, uh, I will put a link to my DeviantArt page and you can note me there. And uh, perhaps I'll choose it, put it on the next episode. And if you have any other comments or concerns about how the show is going, also let me know about that. Anyway, this has been Brad Weaver, or Bradnar, of Brad vs. Art, and also from Three-Headed Gaming, our me and my friend's video game review channel. So check that out at Three-Headed Gaming on YouTube. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'll stall for 25 minutes. Blah, 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 blah.
Blah, 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 done.